Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom. And today I'm going to be doing another video breaking down my IDE, AHK Playground IDE. For you a little bit more, you guys seemed really interested in a lot of the stuff I did in that and how I did it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk today, and I think this is probably going to be the one more popular one, is my... Actually, I'll just show it to you first. Usually I show an example of it last, but well, let's do it first. How to do kind of like a search. So right here I have a list box. As you see, I have all the commands for version 1 here. Uh, so I can type in, I can start typing uh, like message box. So MSG. And as you saw, it just filtered out a lot of that stuff. And here's the three results that are left that have MSG in them. The cool thing about this is with it being kind of like a fuzzy search is that MSG, as you see, it's only at the beginning here. But it's in the middle here so it's going to look through the whole word and just see does msg come up at all it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the phrase word whatever it's going to search the whole thing for every single line so that's really cool it makes it very easy to search stuff maybe i wanted to look up if message box but i couldn't remember like is the if you know, first, is it after, you know, whatever, probably a bad example, but you get the idea. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we're going to take a look about that. Uh, one thing I do want to point out real quick so you can understand what it's doing in the code here is as you saw, when I typed in MSG, it automatically uh, put the blue uh, highlight there on the first instance of where MSG shows up. You don't have to do that. I did that because I like it because if I search something very specific and only one result comes up, instead of me having to come down here, click, and then push doc to go to the documentation on the website, I can just right away jump down here and push this. It saves one second, but hey, let's save a step. That's really what AHK is about. So let, let's make it one step less, but you don't have to do that part. So I'll, I'll mention that part and that line of code, and I'll, I'll point out like, hey, this is that line of code I was talking about. You don't got to use it if you don't want to. Uh, the other cool thing too is this live updates. Basically, anytime I do anything in this message box, it's going to run that code to update what we got. So let me backspace now. And as you saw, it's now displaying anything with the letter M. So not only does this go forward, I guess you could say, but it also kind of goes back. So as you delete stuff, it's going to bring back, you know, other results. So that's things that's really cool. It gives you a lot of options. Uh, you know, it's what you're used to seeing on stuff like Google, uh, Google, pretty much any website out there where you can do searches like that. Uh, let's find that in my code here. Uh, what did I call it? I should probably uh, name these a little better. Uh, search updater. There we go. So let's jump to that. So let's uh, run through this. Some of the stuff I'm not going to cover too, too much because I've done other videos about them. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The code obviously will be linked in the description below. Uh, with this, uh, there's really no need to manipulate this unless you're using something else besides a search box. Uh, I guess I can do videos later on if you want to see how to do this in other things. Maybe like finding a word in an edit box or a document, that kind of thing. So maybe I'll do a video on that, showing each kind of way to do it. Um, but this one's going to be for a list box, but it should be pretty easy for you guys to manipulate to work in any type of uh, control within your GUI. Uh, so yeah, so let's start with this. This is my handler, search changer or change, and that is in my GUI. So here's that edit box, that little tiny search bar that I have up there. You want to put G for go, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to call it search change. I'm really bad at naming stuff. So I just, I'm very vague when I name stuff, unfortunately. Um, and then we need our value, which is just going to be search. So basically, anytime I do something in that box, I press a key, I push delete. This little thing right here, this handler is getting triggered. And then there's that value search, which means just whatever's in the box at that time. So the first thing we're going to do is GUI submit. And I'm doing no hide because obviously I don't want my GUI disappearing. I want it to stay there. And when that the reason we're doing this is because we do need to grab that search info. So we need to grab that variable, whatever it is, each time I make a change to it. So that's what this is doing here. So then we got an if here. It's just saying if not in string. Uh, sites. Uh, the re where that's coming from is actually at the beginning of my script. 
where I have the original data being stored. Uh, with list view, you put the pipes in between each word, and that's basically telling it new line, new line, new line. Uh, so yeah, so that's where it's grabbing this information from that was originally created when the script uh, first ran. Uh, command lookup, um, basically uh, that's, like I said, uh, that is a... Uh, that's the variable of where I'm storing all the stuff in the list box. So that's the new, so sites, that's what's originally displaying, but we need to update it. So we're going to be using the uh, variable command lookup. Uh, so you got to put that into your GUI also. Almost forgot to mention that. That would have been important. I uh, don't know why this is here, actually. This does not need to be here. That can go away. That should be at the top of my script. I don't know why that's there. My bad. Um, so ignore that line. So GUI control, uh, you know, command lookup. Basically, that's what we're going to need to do is that's what we're changing. So we're just doing that GUI control there. Everything else is left blank because we're kind of starting over, I guess you could say. So we're just kind of wiping that out. Uh, sites array. Uh, so we're taking those sites up there, like I said. We're going to split them up and we're splitting them by that little pipe there. So we're basically creating an array because we need to go through every single command and see if does it contain MSG or whatever you're searching for. So we're going to create that array. Our new array we need and new string, we need those blank, once again, because we're doing a complete new list box result kind of thing. So we need to get rid of those. So 4K V insights array, so key and value, uh, those can be renamed to actually say like key or you know whatever you want to name these variables this uh honestly is a bad way to do it uh this code was uh originally copied and manipulated from uh, i forget his name his username but shout out to him hopefully i can find him and put it in the description below he for some odd reason always uses just single letters for his uh variables uh so i'll update that to be a little bit better um, but you guys can change it to whatever you want as long as you make it match in all those spots that you see highlighted hopefully you can see that on the screen yeah it looks like you can uh so the four you know it's going in here with this if so we're doing if in string the value of search basically whatever was typed into our search which for our example was msg you know basically we're gonna do that if it's false uh i honestly We'll be honest with you, I don't know what this greater than zero is. I'm basically thinking that means as long as there's more than one character in there, I think is what's going on there, go ahead and, you know, move on. You know, we don't want to search a blank result with, you know, if I put a bunch of spaces in there or something, I, I guess. I honestly, I don't know. If you know a little bit better what's going on with that little section there, let me know in the comments below. That would help me out a lot. I wasn't able to really figure out what's going on there <laughs> but hey you're just probably copying this code anyway and maybe manipulating a little bit so you probably don't really care too much about that uh, so we need to do the new array uh, that we're just uh, doing um, a push of the value uh, once again we're doing another four basically exact same thing up here but we're doing it with our new array that we created from where we did the string split so new string we need to put those pipes back in there because list box need those pipes in there, or it's just going to put my new array, it's just going to put it as like one long sentence of just every single command on one line. We don't want that. We want to break it back up. So we're basically saying, you know, for each array or string that's in the array uh, as the final result, go ahead, put those pipes back in between. And now we need to do our final update. So we're going to do a GUI control, which I've showed a lot in the last few videos. Command lookup, that was the value or variable of that list box that we had that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And then we're just using uh, you know, a percent sign that's saying that the next thing is a variable and whatever our new string is. Uh, so whatever results were finally there. And now here's that line I was talking about where you don't need it if you don't want it. When I said like it automatically highlights, uh, puts it in blue, the very first result, that's what this is doing. GUI control choose, so it's choosing what to highlight in that uh, list box that we called command lookup, and we're highlighting number one. Uh, so yeah, I mean you could probably add like uh, an array account, you know, like whatever array zero's result is, 
you could put it here as a variable if you for some reason wanted to highlight the last result you could do that you could just add that in somewhere around here uh, i mean pretty much anywhere honestly as long as it's uh below here um so you could do that but if we just want to highlight the first item it's just going to be a one um, but if you don't want to do that just comment this out or delete it it's all up to you and that is the end so we got our little return here so our other code doesn't really run and uh yeah uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's just that one thing. I'm not sure what it's doing, but with it there, it works. So <laughs> it's the best I can say. Hopefully someone can, uh, shine some light a little bit better on that than I can, because I wasn't able to really find much info out on that. I'm probably just not Googling it correctly. Uh, that happens from time to time. If you don't know what you're trying to Google, it's hard. Uh, but yeah. Three, two videos every week. Definitely subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you know when they come out. You know, I'm always doing not just auto hotkeys. I do expand from time to time. So if there is something you guys want to see that has to do with automation, you know, I've done videos where I've talked about, like, Power Toys, uh, which has automation, but that's by Microsoft. has nothing to do with auto hotkeys. Uh, I also have done videos uh, from time to time in other languages. I've done Python, JavaScript, uh, Nim, to name a few. Uh, I never really plan to dive fully into those, maybe do like five videos each. The reason I do do those, because I had this question come up of why, like I'm an auto hockey channel, why am I doing these other languages? Well, if you're like me, I like to expand from time to time. I'm like, you know what, let me learn a new language today. My hope with these videos is just to kind of give you an introduction in the sense of automation of what JavaScript, how you can automate with that, how you can automate with Python. That way maybe you get like a brief introduction and know what you want to do next. You know, maybe one day you want to expand outside of AutoHotKey. So I'm just putting those there as kind of a helpful direction uh, for you guys to maybe know what the next step is in your... Uh, uh, coding career pathway I guess you could call it so yeah thumbs up if you like this video that helps me uh get this out there uh, for others to see and I will see you all on the next one